Hey everyone, you with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel, hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow as well. Today we're going to look at software update version 2020.48.35.5 in our Tesla Model 3 Performance Stealth 2019 edition. We're going to do that and much, much more right after this. Hey everyone, welcome back. And uh, as I said, we are going to do a review of software update 2020.48.35.5. What a mouthful indeed. And as you can see from the release notes, there's nothing too new in this update apart from the usual bug fixes and release notes. If you want to look at the 48 release notes, I suggest you take a look at my recent review of that software update where you'll get a full rundown of what's available in that update. Today we're going to do a mini autopilot challenge to Martin Place in Sydney, or at least we're going to aim for Martin Place in Sydney and uh, try to engage some autopilot and navigate on autopilot as well. And I'll put on autopilot once I turn right uh, at this traffic light. But I uh, just want to update you guys with a couple of things from this update. So the first one is that uh, from the recent 48 releases, we've been having an issue with uh, cabin overheating. So for those of you who don't know, normally there is a really good cabin and battery management system where um, there's air and liquid cooling to keep the cabin and battery nice and cool. Um, and of recent note, unfortunately, the, uh, the air cooling has not been so good for the cabin. So uh, normally on a hot day, the uh, interior will be you know, kept to about 40 degrees with the air conditioning um, coming on automatically. Uh, just with recent updates, it hasn't been doing that. And we've seen uh, stuff online where cars have got to 70, 75 degrees Celsius plus in the cars, which, you know, to be honest, other cars experience it as well. Uh, but of course, we being Tesla owners are used to the fact that our cars are kept cool to 40 degrees. So after a few uh, choice tweets and Facebook posts, etc., Tesla have uh, gotten back to their customers and now cabin overheating protection is now back on. And here's an example of uh, what happened today. Before the update, the car got to 50 degrees Celsius and it was a hot day today. It got to about 30 something degrees uh, Celsius in Sydney and uh, the car kept under 40 degrees Celsius. So thank you very much Tesla and Elon Musk for looking after us Tesla owners and uh, bringing back that cabin uh, cooling feature. The next thing I want to update with you guys is that uh, I had a recent service for this Model 3. Um, I was a bit hesitant to tell you about this guys, but uh, what has been happening is that the cabin has been smelling a bit odd. Um, for lack of a better word, I'm just going to put autopilot on now. Uh, for lack of a better word, it's been smelling like feet, like stinky feet basically. And look, I can vouch for the fact that my family and I don't smell like that. Look, none of us smell that bad, I think. Uh, but the car, every time you turn the air conditioning on, this odor would come through the vents. And I believe reading the forums and online, it's a known issue. So we had service out. Uh, mobile tech, uh, shout out to Doug from Tesla. Thanks very much, Doug. And he uh, sorted it out for us. So now, uh, the air conditioning, every time you turn it on, there's, there's this nice hint of a mint smell, which is a lot more pleasant <laughs> than uh, what used to come out of that vent. So uh, thanks again, Tesla, for sorting us out there. Appreciate it. Uh, that uh, auto lane change is not working for me, so uh, I'll just stay behind this bus. And the third bit of news I want to tell you guys, which has nothing to do with Tesla, but more to do with my channel, is that, as you can see, if you do subscribe to my channel, that I'm coming up to 7,000 views or 7,000 subscribers, I should say. And uh, to commemorate that event, um, I'm going to run two competitions. Um, the first one, well, actually, they're very similar, but essentially, I want you guys to guess the odometer reading. As of today, when I finish this video, I'll take a screenshot uh, of both cars, uh, one for the Model S and one for the Model 3. And the closest guess will for both cars, so there'll be two winners, one winning entry per person. Uh, so the winning entry for both cars will receive a product of their choice from my merchandise store. So it's on me. You can pick anything you like from the merchandise store and I will take care of the cost and I'll send it out to you. So that is uh, the subscriber giveaway and uh, let's uh, get back on to the autopilot challenge uh, for this update. 
Let, let me put the uh, cameras on so you guys can see what's going on around us. And uh, for some reason, it's limiting the speed to 50 or what it was. Uh, it seems to be okay now. Bit of a jerky frame rate there, I can see. I don't know why. It does happen sometimes uh, with, uh, you know, with updates when uh, the car sort of wakes itself back up again. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, so it's flicking between 40 and 60. I think it's still reading the, um, the bus speed limit uh, on the back of that bus there, which is a bit frustrating. So that's still not fixed yet, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure there's, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some way they can fix that with the algorithm where if there's, you know, if it's not flashing, then it's 60, if it's flashing, then it's 40, you know, I'm sure the uh, engineers at uh, Tesla can work that out. But for now, it's still an issue. And, um, and the speed limit is actually 60. I'm going to try to get around this bus so that I don't, you know, keep having to fall back to 40, which can be frustrating. And it'll just, um, Ooh, I'm going to just cut up there because his Mini is trying to cut in and I don't want to be one of those cars that cuts him off. Alright, we've got the Mini in front of us, so um, so shouldn't be a problem now. The 40 sign from the bus is no longer an issue and straight away the car wants to lane change. Ooh, nope, not yet. Nope, don't, don't change lanes yet. There's a car behind me. Okay, okay, okay. Alright, now we're good, now we're good. So I've got it on. Let me just show you guys. Um, the settings here. Ooh, I'm letting it do its thing. I've got it on Mad Max mode at the moment. Um, and that is, for those who don't know, that is the car just doing its thing. Oh my god. Just cut in front of that car there. That was pretty tight. That car was coming up pretty close. Let's see if he gives me the finger. Or waves his arm or her arms. Nope, she's pretty good. Pretty understanding. Sorry about that. Um, broken down car there. Uh, yep, so yeah, I've got it on Mad Max mode. There you go, Mad Max mode, auto lane change. Uh, no confirmation required. So essentially about as autonomous as I can get in this update without having full self-driving, of course. Now I want to go in that lane. As a local, I know that. So let's see, is that, yep, the car will do it for me. Okay, it's changing lanes, very good. I've got to say, this is probably the most confusing part of Sydney, this uh, Warringah Freeway southbound approach onto the harbour crossings. Uh, having driven for the last, how many years of my life, 22 years of my life, it still, uh, still can be hair raising, uh, let alone being on autopilot. So that seemed to do it okay, apart from that one tight lane change where I probably cut off that lady a bit too quickly. Uh, luckily she was quite understanding, I didn't see any <laughs> any anger from her so thank you very much for understanding and uh, look looks like we're on the correct lane now it's uh, 70 kilometers an hour speed limit so I'll just tap 70 on there still not hugging speed um, speed signs for now unfortunately it's a good test I haven't been on the bridge in a while but um, there is a electronic speed sign up ahead on that overpass let's see what it does does it read it no nope, hasn't read it yet that's okay still Still not fixed yet, unfortunately. Um, what about this one? There's a few examples coming up, so we'll just keep an eye on it. Yeah, still hasn't read that one. There are traffic signals as well on the bridge. Uh, they're actually lane indicators, so we'll see what it does. Quick flick of the indicator there. The car wanted to, f to come out of the lane. Yep, there it is again, trying to do that. Okay, off you go. I'm pretty happy there. Oh, well now we're in lane five, which is scary because uh, there's uh, oncoming traffic in lane four, so I'm going to really keep my hands on the wheel here and pay attention because I do not want it to change lanes into the right lane because that would be scary. Yeah, that would be the end, literally. So no, we don't want that at all. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I feel like I'm in the center of the lane. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Uh, but yeah, hanging on to the to the wheel here, lane five. Not a good lane. Not a good lane. Uh, let's see which exit the car takes. I would personally take the like, far right exit. Um, that way, I can um, go into the north side of the city. Especially for especially for this challenge, I'm not planning to go into the city itself. I just wanted to uh, test the bridge out, basically. So uh, if it doesn't use the right lane, I'm just going to. Um, just going to just disengage and go into the right lane myself. Oh, 
oh, I don't like this lane at all. Why must you pick this lane? So scary. I mean, there are four lanes there. These two lanes for cars, one for the bus, one for the Kyle Expressway. So it knows where it is. So that, and that is like, you know, that's reassuring to some degree. Lane divider, yeah, not bad. Will it indicate right? I hope so. It has, yes. One more, one more. Go, go, go. Yes, yes. Oh, how good is that? Yes, yes. That's the first time it's done that. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, sweating like a pig here. Wow. Talk about an adrenaline rush. <laughs> yeah, all right. Jeez. All right. Uh, that, this, is ne this car has never done that. It's never moved two lanes across to exit into the appropriate lane. Oh. <laughs> Shut okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm good now. That was, uh, that was good. That was hair raising stuff. I'm glad we got, got there though. <sighs> All right, guys. Well, that, I might end the video there. I think I've had enough today of autopilot. Um, just engage now. Uh, don't forget the uh, 7,000 subscriber giveaway. Um, so make sure you get your guesses in. Um, I'm happy for you to guess it on the comment section. I'm happy for you to guess it uh, on social media, on my Twitter account. Uh, tag me on my Twitter account, obviously. Um, what else? Uh, yep. I'll just move across here. Uh, post on Facebook. Um, message me on my Facebook account. And uh, yeah, the closest guess uh, per car, one entry... Sorry, one correct guess per winner. You can guess both cars if you like. Uh, one correct guess per person, I should say, um, wins the opportunity to um, to buy or to select uh, merchandise from my merchandise store, anything you like. And that's my shout, and I will um, post it out to you, and I'll certainly get in contact with you if you're the uh, winner. Alrighty, guys. Well, this is where I say farewell, and thank you very much for watching. Hope you're all staying safe. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already yet. And uh, have you received software update 2020.48.35.5? If you have, uh, leave a comment below and uh, have you discovered any features I have not talked about yet? Love to hear from you as would everyone else in the Tesla community. Stay safe guys and until the next video, happy charging.